The Bible says, whether I eat or drink or whatsoever I, does that take in dressing? So that means I'm to dress to the glory of God. Is that right? Now watch this. Go in your Bible to Luke 8. What book did I say? Go to Luke 8. Now you're going to Luke 8, hold your thumb in Luke 8, and we're going to read from the screen. Go to Luke 8 and hold your thumb there. This says, fashion is deteriorating the intellect and eating out the spirituality of our what? What is taking away a lot of our spirituality? What's taking it away? What? Fashion. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world. What does fashion mean? What does fashion mean? Shaping. If you fashion something, this is the way you do it. So the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, fashion in this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your what? Romans 12, 1 and 2. Now this says, obedience to fashion is pervading our seven-day Adventist churches and is doing more than how many power? Any other power to separate our people from God. On the Day of Atonement, we don't need to be separate from God. We need to be at one with God. And one of the things that's separating us from Jesus is what? Fashion. I mean, think of it. Do you know that some of us would not wear or do the things we do if it wasn't for fashion? I remember being in the airport one time and saw a young sister. She was going to the airport rushing. And, and, rushing, and they had one of these big heels. I don't know if you've seen. They have these heels that are about this big. And the sister's walking on those heels. I mean, she could barely move. And she, she got to a place where nobody else can see her. She's in the airport. And she got down and she sat down. And she started rubbing the heel of her foot. She knew that her feet was hurting. You see, when you understand physiology, do you know that you will actually hear your feet will tell you, please reform your shoe? <laughs> and the way it tells you, it doesn't talk to you like that. You ever seen those big corns on your toe? You know those corns? That you, you go get a pedicure and you're trying to manicure it and pedicure it. But let me tell you something. The, what those corns mean on your toes, those big knots and bumps, it means that you're wearing the wrong footwear. <laughs> and the the, the thing that's saying, please help me. Now, my brothers and sisters, but we wear it because of fashion. I mean, it used to be that all we had to do was talk to the women, but not now. Do you know that men are worse than women today? They're walking around with mirrors in their pocket, brushing their hair every time they get, crushing. Listen, listen, listen. Today, you know, if you would have went back 10 years ago, you would never have caught a man in a skinny jean. A skinny jean, yes. Amen. You seen the skinny jean? You seen them? I'm not going to tell you who make them because you got to understand something. When you, when you wear those skinny jeans, it begins to start exposing things that only a, a, a homosexual is appreciative about. They're the ones that make that. No, it's serious. No, it's serious. No, 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 it's serious. You see, if you study physiologically, listen, listen. If you study physiologically, men are more stimulated by sight and women are more stimulated by sight uh, about sound and touch. That's why in the Garden of Eden, the, 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 the devil came to Eve with a musical voice. That's why the trick has always been, get a, take that young lady and put some music on, and she's, she's lost her mind. You see, brothers and sisters, this has been the devil's plan from the very beginning of time. Now, my brothers and sisters, this is the difference. But the man, he's stimulated by sight, and that homosexual, that sin makes you want to see another man or another woman. You better be careful what you wear. Now, that skinny jean, you ever seen a man wear a skinny jean? He can't even walk. You know how he walk? He walk like this. <laughs> that, now, I can't understand how can a man wear a skinny, he can't be a man who wears a skinny jean. Why, the skinny jean will rob him of his manhood. And you think of it. And the worst thing is, I have seen the skinny jean brought into the church. And they put on a skinny suit. I've seen the same type of skinny suit. You've seen the skinny, skinny suit? Suit. That skinny suit so tight, the man can't even lift up his hand. How he's going to preach the everlasting gospel? How can he give the trumpet a certain sound and he can't even lift his hand up? The suit himself will tame the man and make him preach a tame, lifeless message. He can't even lift his hand. My brother and sister, you've got to understand something. Fashion is killing us. And it says it's doing more than any of the power to separate our people from God. My brothers and sisters, you've got to understand, in the most holy place, this must change, and we must take on the fashion of heaven. We must understand why we're we talking about this at a school. Education 246, let's read this together. It says, how much education? No education can be complete that does not teach right principles in regard to what? When you come to school, part of the schooling should be taught. Women and men understand this. Let me tell you something. And if anybody, especially our women, should understand this. Now, the men need to understand it just for their manhood. Praise God. 
But the women need to understand it as much. You know that you're one of the most valuable things in all the world. And what our women need is not condemnation, but education. You've been bought with a price. You're valuable. Listen, everything in the world that we consider valuable, you know what we do to it? We cover it. Think about it. If we were to buy a car, Bentley, $100,000, $50,000, $150,000, and there's acid rain, what do you do to the car because you don't want it to be hit by the acid rain? You do what? Cover it. You buy a cell phone, iPhone 10. You paid $500 for it. And so now you want to protect it. What you get for that phone? You buy a case to cover it to protect your investment. Now, sisters, you know, if you pay good money to get your hair done and it starts raining outside, what you do to your hair? Talk to me, somebody. You cover it. Why? Everything that's viable, you cover. Our women are the most viable thing on this planet, and yet we teach them to expose their bodies instead of covering. Any young woman that exposes her body is simply because she doesn't know how valuable she is. And she doesn't need condemnation. She needs education to know that you're valuable. You've been bought with a price. Your price is far above rubies. And because of this, you should be covered of that. And let me tell you something. If any husband or any father or any brother was intelligent, they would teach you this. I, I would tell my daughter or my wife or my friend or my sister, I would let her know that when a man looks at you and you expose your body, that that man that looks at your body exposed, he's not looking at you saying when you show your, uh, your cleavage and you show all this arm and your leg, he's not saying, oh, that makes a good wife to raise my children. That's not what he says. I can't tell you what he says, but you know what he says. Now, my brothers and sisters, this does not help our women. We've got to teach them something very important. Now, listen, if you were to go to a market where they're serving flesh, fish or chicken or anybody who's been to a fresh market, they know what I'm talking about. There is a certain class of things that are attracted when you expose flesh. You know what's attracted? Flies. When you expose your body, the only thing that you're going to get around you, young sisters, is flies. I'm going to tell you something. You, you know you can always tell a fly. <laughs> a fly, a fly, last time I checked, does not have a job. And when a young man would make you, make you work for yourself while he plays video games, stay home while you go out to work, while you don't have a man, you got a fly. And that fly will leave you away with a baby, but nobody to take care of that baby. This is not what you want. And the way to stop flies from coming, you got to do something special. I'm trying to tell you something. I'm trying to give you some education. That if you understand this, you understand how valuable you are. Now, my brothers and sisters, there's one way to get the fly away. First, you shoe the fly. Praise God. Then after you shoe the fly, something intelligent to do is to cover up the flesh. And if you cover the flesh, the fly will go away naturally. We're told that the dress reform is a shield from a thousand evils protecting our women. We've taken away the shield and they don't know that they've been robbed of a heritage that shows that you're a princess. That God wants you to be a queen. Now, if you understand that, we want to do things differently. You know, Luke 8, if you would look at Luke 8, you'll know this is a sign. I've got to get ready to bring this measure to close. I don't know how we're going to close it, but I've got to get ready to close. I know you're ready to go, but I've got to get ready to close. Luke 8. Luke chapter 8. Look what the Bible says in Luke 8. Beginning in verse 29. Look what the Bible says. The Bible says that it is a sign of a demon possession when we start exposing our bodies. Luke 8, look at what it says, beginning in verse 26. Please, please, verse 26, please. Verse 26, the Bible says in Luke 8, verse 26, let's read that together. It says, and they arrived at the country of what? The Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. Verse 27 says, and when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had what? Devils a long time. Now notice the sign of being controlled by devils. Notice the sign. It says that they were controlled by devils, long time, which had devils, long time, and where what? So when we start taking our clothes off, this is a sign of what? Demon possession. It says, neither abode in any house but in tombs. Now, what happens when we come back to Jesus? Verse 35. It says, then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed. What was the first thing he was doing? Sitting where? Don't you want to be at the feet of Jesus? Clothes. And in his right mind. In other words, when we dress that way, we're out of our minds. 
but we are clothed in our right mind. You know that the plan of redemption puts clothes back on us. You remember Adam and Eve, when they sinned, their clothes disappeared. What did they put on? They made a certain type of fashion. What did they put on? You can read the story in Genesis 3. They put on fig leaves. What, what did they fashion the fig leaves into? There was a certain type of fashion. What did they fashion the fig leaf into? An apron. You know, the apron is the same for nearly 6,000 years. You go back and study the history of the Masons, the secret society, they wear aprons. You can know that you can trace the history, and I've looked at it, researched it, and apron looks the exact same. It's the same fashion. If you put on an apron today, you'll find out what the apron exposes. You see, you want to find out that the fig leaves of yesterday is the fashion of today. So they made an apron. What is the apron exposed? What is the apron exposed? Come on, talk to me. The apron exposed the cleavage. The apron exposes the arm like a spaghetti strap. The apron exposes the back. It exposes the thighs. It exposes the legs. This is what apron does, even today. This is not approved in the most holy place. You can't wear that. Now, listen. Would you like to solve 50% of diseases in women, yes or no? You know that right now today, that there are 50% of women. What if I could tell you a way to solve 50% of all diseases that approach women? Would you like to know that, yes or no? Do you know the seven evidence has a solution? Healthcare can't give you this. You won't learn this in a hospital nor a lifestyle center, but you can learn this in principle if you get this principle from a sanitarian. Now watch this now. Let's read Helpful Living, page 123. What does it say? It says, many have become lifelong what? Endless through their compliance with the demands of fashion. Displacements and deformities. What's the next word? Cancers and other terrible diseases are among the evils resulting from fashionable what? You mean to tell me I can get cancer by the way I dress? You think a hospital will tell you that? No. But a sanitarium will. Now this says, half the diseases of women. How many? 50%. And the diseases of women are caused by what? Do you understand that many women have back problems, but they don't trace it back to high heels? When you wear high heels and you go above two inches, physiologically, it puts you out of center with gravity. And so all of a sudden, stuff starts going forward that shouldn't be. And stuff starts going backwards that shouldn't be. And as a result, it puts a strain on the uh, uh, spinal cord and it causes a strain upon the back. And the woman later on gets back problems and she doesn't trace it back to the fashionable dress. She's trying to look like she has. She can barely walk, but she's wearing high heels. You see, you have to understand that these are causes that God is trying to give you us blessings and benefits. And we're saying we want to be sick. And God's saying, I want you to be healthy and holy and happy. I want to be happy. What do you say? Amen. Half a disease of women. I can go on and continue. Now, it goes on to say, uh, pass on this. This says, surely no one preparing for the coming of Jesus will be found at the what? Now, this is what seven Adventists believed in 1945. 1945, the church believed this. This is in Review and Herald. You know who Joe Cruz is? One of the uh, uh, well-known Seventh Adventist evangelists. He was commenting about this in his book, Creeping Compromise, but he's quoting from the actual copy of Review and Herald. I have the copy. What does it say? Surely no one preparing for the coming of Jesus will be found at the what? Theater. Where else? Carnival. The movie house, the opera, the circus, the dance, or the card tables, or in attendance at what? Commercialized sports. We strongly urge separation from worldly associations and skating rinks and public what? So the skating is not bad, but there's a worldly association when you go to a worldly skating rink. Are you with me? The music that's being played. If you listen to the music, people are dancing to the same satanic music that they later dance on at the clubs that they've been tricked into by the devil himself. Now, and it says in public bathing beaches. I remember sometimes going to islands or places and they say to me, are you ready to go to the beach? I say, no. I'm not interested in going to the beach, and not unless it's late at night or early in the morning. The only flesh I want to see is the flesh of the fish. That's safe. I mean, think of it. When you go to the beach, what are females, if you're a male, wearing at the beach? Let's be plain. All they got on is a panty and a bra. Is that right? Just a panty and a bra. That's all it is. I'm just telling you what, what's really going on. Now listen to me, brothers and sisters. In a house, if you were to see a woman with a panty and a bra on, you know what you do? Ah! Isn't that what you do? But then you get to a beach and the woman's doing like this. How is it so modest at the beach when it's so immodest in your house? You see, the devil has tricked us. He's tricked it. You'll make a man that what he thinks of what he needs in the wintertime is an air condition and what he needs in the summertime is a heater. That's tricky. That's what the devil has done. 